What's up guys, Kappa 86 here and welcome to episode number 1 of my my team cover your mode on F1 22. As you may have known if you watched um, the pre-season video we signed Marcus Armstrong as our teammate. If you haven't seen that, go watch it, links in the description below. But, here's our car and we are ready for the first race of the career mode. We're going to advance now, get to the second. Hey, I and think we could better manage our time by organizing some team activities. We're gonna Head to the activity screen to see what now. we have available. So we're going to do probably going to do the aero and chassis only because I totally forgot. Not gonna lie, but we've got 1,150 resource points. We're gonna spend them now. Maybe we can do an aero looking. Looking at the different things we've got, we've got zero arrow probably. We're one of the lowest on powertrains, however, and the lowest on durability. So we're gonna chuck on a durability upgrade, and we still have 650. So we're gonna go for powertrain as well. If all those go right, we should. Well, we're ahead of McLaren at the moment, and we also have 1.2 million to spend on this which we're not gonna have enough to get anything for but as we fast forward the time still we've got an extra few things more money 800 resource points we're going to see can we get anything with these resource points we can so the um the upgrade did work so we're now close to alpha tower can we do anything? We're lowest on chassis. And we're gonna do that then. That would put us ahead of Haas on the chassis side of things. We're behind a McLaren now. So McLaren have brought upgrades into this first race. But it is time we're going to advance to the Bahrain race weekend. It is episode number one of many we're going to try and get as many episodes as we can out this week and the following weeks two three hey, episodes welcome to the team more. i'm your head of r d my name's charlie please make yourself at home you're going to be using this workstation pretty regularly over the coming months so spend some time to get familiar with it you should be able to access everything from messages to vehicle development okay so we're going to get into practice do some laps, see how the car feels. However, it seemed like things would be going bad from the very start. This is practice one and going down into the left hand of sharp. We get on the curb and we lose. The back end of the car just doesn't stick with us. And it's our first spin. Just gets on the curb and doesn't turn. And we are sent around into a spin already. So then with practice over, we're still on team claim level 1, um, it was okay, we didn't really find the pace in the car, we were P19, P18, around that area really, um, not much higher, not much lower, we were never last, so um, jumping into qualifying, we know where the car is based in position wise, so we're just going to see what we can do, um, yeah. And straight away, it couldn't get off to a worse start because we have a sense of fault, so we can't. Right, we've off. lost telemetry. In fact, we've lost pretty much all sensor information. It's being looked into now, so just bear with us for a few minutes, if you can, please. So, as the engineer just said, we have a sense of fault. Thank goodness it's not more than a minute, really. We've only got 13 seconds left to wait, but our qualifying it starts here then. Four the first Grand Prix of the season we're gonna get out on track um, we're gonna get out on track now we are out on track for the first lap in qualifying I'm gonna be quiet for the next year this lap I'll film the end listen to the engine, listen to the car let's see where we can go on our first one in Q1 
and coming to the end of the last what is it going to be is a bit of a scruffy one to be honest where the fuckers and we're ahead of the and some over there and it's disappointing rather to say the least we went a wide few places we definitely got the corner into the shop and uh, it was okay we seven up so then back to the garage and with p17 overall albon yet to set a lap but saying to the line where can he go 14 so he's way ahead of us look at george russell down here as well in 16th but we're 18th there is definitely room for improvement look at the gap between me and alonso though that is a whole seven tenths of a second to find if we want to get out of this drop zone at least to get up to the guys ahead Two Red Bulls leading at the moment, but it's going to be a tall order to get out of Q1, that's for sure. So then, here we are for our second run in Q1. Currently P18, not where we want to be, we're in the drop zone. As expected, really, from, from where we've been in practice. This is our average position, really. So we're going to go again now and see what we can do. So the run we just did, and it's not good enough, we are out, look at us, P18, with two minutes of the session left, there's no way we're getting out in time for lap, but look at Marcus Armstrong, our teammate, what a job from him, he's in the top 10, top 7 even, 7th place for the New Zealander, up there, really showing what the car can do, what he can do in the car, and we're just so far behind, we can't do anything then. I'm going to skip to the end of the session, where it is going to be our final result. Then we're going to end up from 18th, we drop, and where's Marcus Armstrong more importantly? I don't see him at the very start, and we are both out. Ah, I am way off the pace, 22nd position, a whole 7 tenths off Latifi. That is embarrassing. And Marcus Armstrong, P18. What a lap in his first run. Don't know what happened to him. Down in 18th. And we are both out in Q1. We have it all to do in the race then. No more testing. No more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities and it could be a strategic race this one with Sakia notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Perez, and Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Russell, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, Magnussen, and Esteban Ocon, Gasly, Sonoda, Lando Norris, and Joe, Albon, Mick Schumacher, Daniel Ricciardo, and Marcus Armstrong. Stroll, Vettel, Latifi, and King. And now it's time to head down to the track. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today, as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Back row of the grid, not a great start to the season, so let's try and improve our position over the course of this Grand Prix. So then, here we are on the grid. Starting plump last in 22nd position, we are going to go start on the mediums and go to the hards. Going to put a um, few laps over, we'll do that. Setup will keep the same then. 
time for the formation lap for the Bahrain Grand Prix in round one of the My Team career mode. Starting to creep in then, as we start last position, we get to see the carnage and boulder ahead of us. Hopefully try and gain a few positions on this first lap as well then. Here we go then. Not much longer left as we go into our grid spot now. We're getting ready, warmed up the tyres, ready for the first race of the season. Let's see. Get our good spot spot on then. We're gonna tilt a bit to the left if we can then. And we've got a purple for the first race of the season. The lights are coming on now. Five lights in Barbie. And we are underway for the round one of my mighty cover year mode. It's a decent start for us as we keep with Latifi. We're gonna dive down the inside, see how many positions we can gain. Armstrong is just still in the pack, staying where he was, and we go straight into the back of Vettel. May have got wind damage, but we are gaining some positions as we get a warning for collision with Vettel. We just try to keep it clean, but they broke so early then. So now we're getting on the curb as we lose position to our teammate. We're now 19th place then. We've got, we may have gotten damage on the front end. We're up in 19th, we gained positions at least, but the back end is just stepping up. No grip in this car then. At the moment, as Vettel nearly sends one down our inside, and I definitely feel like we have damage on the front wing then. We ask for the vehicle to keep it. We ask for the vehicle condition, he says it's all fine then, as we keep on going. Lap one, and we're up into 19th. It was a decent start then except from the collision with Sebastian Vettel there. All looks good, but we've got Vettel all over the back of us. He's in the Aston Martin, probably our rival team in this stage of the season. So far back, and he's going to send one of us. And he's got the inside line. We're going to close it, and we keep ahead of him there. But we're losing time to our teammate. I don't have the confidence in this car to push as fast as I should be doing. And we're already eight tenths off our teammate and we've got Sebastian Vettel behind us. We're using some overtaking and looks like Charles Leclerc is still the leading Ferrari in this race and he is then from Max Verstappen and his teammate Carlos Sainz rounding out the top three as I can see in the bottom left now for Romeo and a Mercedes. That's probably Bottas going side by side with one of the Mercedes there, but it's 19th after lap one then closing in on Armstrong a bit using our overtake on the main straight then going to try and move up positions as the back end goes again now this is going to leave us very vulnerable for Sebastian Vettel we're going to dive down our inside we didn't have the grip through there we're going to sperm it round the outside can we keep it? no, there's no grip these medium tyres we can't get them warmed up we're down into 20th then this is going from bad to worse here in Bahrain and it's really not looking the way we would have wanted it now I've got the two Canadians all over the back of us. The tyres really not in the window I would have liked them to be. So hopefully we can just get them warmed up. The 88 degrees on the front left, they're 90 on the rears. But we're going to have the Canadian, he's going to get us as well then. Is he going to go down the inside? It's not what we wanted early on in the race. But we do stay ahead of him for now then. Not exactly what we wanted here in Bahrain. It's going awfully wrong. I definitely feel like we have damage on the front end. And it's so understeery. Stroll's not going to come at us down into the final corner. We use some overtake, but we're not going to fight it too hard. Stroll down our inside. We're going to have the outside line. Get the power down and we stay 20th position then. But here he comes then. Stroll is going to get us down into turn one and see we're using our overtake he's not going to get DRS yet DRS is now enabled however 
He dives for it. Latifi was right there as well. Then are we? We're going to get the helpful hand of the DRS then on Lance Stroll. We're going to use overtake. We've lost all of it nearly. It's not really the best management in these first three laps of the Grand Prix, and the back end totally goes again. Then we're nearly bound. We have to settle for 20. First and now maybe 22nd with the Williams of Latifi all over the back of us and the yellow flags are out and Latifi is slowed down. I don't think I hit him then. I don't think there was any contact between me and the Canadian driver. Might have just gotten wide there. So we can now take a breather. 21st position. This is really not where the team wanted to be. We've made a position up but well, I feel like I've got damage, definitely, on the front end. After the collision with Sebastian Vettel and the tyres are just not sticking to the track as I wanted them to, then really not how this race was expected to go from me, personally. So then, skipping her to lap 6 and Nicholas Latifi has got DRS on us. We do not have the pace. Honestly, this car... If it wasn't hard enough being on the controller at the moment until I get the pedals, it is very, very hard this game on the controller that he, he's not going to get us this time. But we might as well try a totally different strategy at this point. I'm thinking about maybe pitting for softs instead of hards, just trying something. We're going to need a safety car for sure if we want any chance of a top 15, I would say. There's this car. Our teammate seems to be finding it okay, he's 18th at least, which is a lot better than we're doing. As we're just finding, we're getting to grips with the car at least. This is just a test run really. I wasn't expecting anything big, but this is worse than I ever expected. We're losing nearly a second a lap to the Aston Martins ahead. I can't hit the apexes, it's absolutely awful. I'm already thinking about pitting, but we'll stay out for a few laps longer with the Latifi on the back of us. I'm expecting he's going to get us on the straight then, or the main straight. He's not going to get us here then, once we're going to stay ahead. And he will have a big helping hand of DRS down this main straight. We're not going to fight it too much then. Latifi, here he comes then. He's going to pull out to the inside line and he's gonna get the DRS and he glides past us, never really a competition in this car but he locks up and we go straight back through on the inside and we're gonna get DRS to help us get away big mistake there from the Canadian driver we're gonna get DRS and we're gonna stay ahead for another lap then we can keep this up and then we'll be getting 21st at least it's not the embarrassment of last place of a few DNFs as well to bring us into the top 20 but this is not what I wanted in this K86 racing car not where I was expecting to be fighting for positions down 21st I hoped at least we could be close to our teammate he's carrying this car right now with an 18 at least we're beating Aston Martin with him, but he's now Latifi, he's going to pull out on our inside, we're going to fight him a bit around the outside, we're going to get the better run, we're going to get the inside for the next corner, we close the door pretty simple and stay 21st position, and Latifi maybe he's going to get us this time, he's a lot closer than he was last lap to get us here then. And we're just going to back out, we're going to let him have it, so we can then get the DRS. Using some tactics from Verstappen and Leclerc at Jeddah this year. We get the DRS then, and it's going to pull us right up to the back of the Williams. And we're going to pull to the outside, get the DRS, and get ahead into the break zone. The TV doesn't challenge it, but he does get DRS this straight then. So Armstrong's battling Vettel as well then, he's lost out, he's now down in 19th then. Not what we needed in our battle with Aston Martin. Vettel up to 18th, Armstrong down to 19th. So then we've got yellow flags ahead, and that is a Haas. 
He was pulled over and it's Kevin Magnussen. And he's out of the race. A mechanical failure for the Haas. The TPR has gotten past us anyway then. So we're going to keep 21st position it looks like. And there he is. The stricken down Haas. On the right hand side reliability issues. Ferrari powered car. So that's a problem for Haas. He was running very well in the points actually. So we're going to drop to 21st. Because the TPR has now gone ahead of us. And we're, we're going to box this lap actually. No safety car. I would have maybe liked a safety car for that incident. But we're not going to get one. So we're not going to complain. We're going to box this lap then. Onto the hard tyres. Hoping for a safety car later to fit onto the soft. But we're just going to maybe undercut as we see an Alfa Romeo pit as well. And a Williams of Alex Albon pitting. So we're going to pit this lap onto the hard compound tyre. Maybe undercut Latif if we can. Catch him out on cold tyres. So Bottas is the Alfa Romeo in. Albon is also in. They're all on the hard tyres I think. Yes they are. So we're now going to pit on to the hards as well and join them so let's try this immersive pit stop the countdown and we've gotten good it's not bad so 2.6 to 2.9 second pit stop is a 2.7 overall so we're outlast we're going to try and to get the tyres warmed up as quick as possible to try and get some time gained on Nicholas Latifi and we go straight on at turn one and this oh it's turning into an absolute disaster it is utter shambles for us at the moment as the two leaders pit we're even swerving on the straight to try and get some temperature into these hard compound tires and again straight on 70% tire grip oh dear me so then after a few off track Adventures, venturing off the track a few times, we maybe got the tyres into the working window as Stroll and Latifi are now pitting. Our teammates staying out then, Marcus Armstrong. Maybe the overcut was more powerful, maybe we should have stayed out longer than Latifi, but we will see. He's definitely going to be ahead of us, unless he had problems on his lap, but we definitely are going to be behind because we were off the track multiple times missing all the apexes here and Latifi is going to be way way ahead from before we can maybe catch up because he'll have cold tyres look at that then so far behind it's 12 full seconds to Latifi now there's Guangyi Zhou and Alex Albon are side by side then the Alfa Romeo and the Williams coming close in into the pits Ferrari, the Red Bull and the Mercedes then. And look at the time difference now, 6 seconds to Latifi, we're closing in as he's got cold tyres, we've got them all warmed up now, we can start to push onto the back and we go wide again there. But we can start to push up to the back of the Williams now, close another half second through there. Where as Marcus Armstrong finally comes into the pits then. Maybe the overcoat was more powerful, we will see where Marcus comes out then. But 5.5, our goal is now top 20 in this race, or just not to finish last. Technically we haven't because of Kevin's DNF, but on track we do not want to be last place, especially not behind Nicholas Latifi then. And Stroll and Armstrong's going to come out right in between the Aston Martins. That's where he did pit into. And now the TPR has got his tyres warmed up. But we closed a half a second on that lap. Forty-four seconds behind the teammate. That's only two foot stops. It's it's difficult to say the least. We are way, way off. Right. 
is now Latifi, puts the gap up in his Williams. As I said earlier, this is just basically a test race. See if we can get used to the cars, Leclerc does set the fastest lap of the race. It's a Ferrari 1-2. At the moment, looks like the Red Bull is going to maybe challenge him into turn 1. Interesting battle for the podium places. That's still ongoing. But yeah, test run really, getting used to the car, definitely not how we wanted it though. Um, we need to, we need a safety car really, if we want to use the new set of softs, maybe we'll be quicker on them. The only chance I really have is a safety car or another DNF of getting in the top 20 then. No way we're catching the TV now, because just falling really a second this lap alone to the Williams that's really not good as Armstrong might be dropping back even further down to 19th then because it looks like Stroll is on the back of our teammate as well now this is really turning into an utter disaster for K86 racing there uh, it was expected we would be towards the back of the grid, but I did not think we would be this far off the pace this early as well. We'll change a few things going into Jeddah next race, which is mainly a wheel revolved truck as well. And for the controller, we'll be challenging. Maybe you need to put the AI down a bit. But definitely need some changes, some upgrades of sort going into Jeddah then. It's just really not not as we want it. We might even be getting lapped by the Ferrari if his pace keeps up. Need a safety car that would bring us back into contention for a top 20. Because we can overtake in the car, we know that from lap one, corner one is the only overtake we did, and then we've just been falling back from that point onwards. Then good battles throughout the field, though. And this has not been the race we wanted, as Marcus is holding off Stroll then for 18th position, 18th and 21st. Really not good at all. I expect it to be higher to be honest. But after qualifying being seven tenths off Lance of um Nicholas Latifi, sorry, we knew something was wrong with the car and that has just further back that up. So lap seventeen and twenty nine. Still ten laps plus two go then. We need a crash safety car spin from Latifi would be nice anything that can bring us into contention then for a top 20 finish here yeah. under the lights the car not what we wanted it to be here we are and there's a yellow flag behind us and the ferrari the leading ferrari the climb is off and he's he's gone wide i'm expecting Let's see a quick replay of what happened to the Ferrari then. He spun on the exit curb. We can't see it. Leclerc has spun from the lead of the race and the Ferrari. Oh dear me, he's dropped down. He's out of the top five. He's out of the podium. And contention for the lead of the race is now gone. Shock yellow flags and the dying stages of this race lap 20 of 29 and Leclerc has spun he was comfortably leading this race comfortably he was way ahead of his teammate Sai and, and he's spun so now that leaves the leading battle between the Red Bull and the Ferrari then Carlos Sainz may be getting his first ever Formula 1 win in the first race of the season then and now the time has come, the blue flags are out. As the slowest car, we have to let Carlos Sainz and Verstappen through. And there's a yellow flag and the Mercedes is slow behind the Mercedes. 
Oh, what a disaster. The Mercedes and he's pulling over and Russell is out of the race. George Russell is out. In round one, Mercedes troubles. And that is a huge shock in the dying embers of this race. Russell pulls over in his Mercedes. We have been lapped. And now we're 21st. We have underbody damage apparently. We've been over some curbs a bit too much then. And that's going to push us up into 20th position then. When we finally do get around to that part of the track. But yet again, no safety car. We cannot pit for a set of soft tyres. So we're very far behind Marcus at the moment. But he's doing well, he's in there. He's in contention for a few places, as you can see, the top left, Russell, is out. That's going to put us up into 20th position then, ahead of a Mercedes and a Haas, even though they have DNF. But, we can take things away from this race, certainly. The car needs huge upgrades. I need to get to hands with this new car, with the new handling model. As we now overtake Russell, where his car parked up, we're up into 20th position then. It's an extra place, I'll take it very happily. But Mercedes and Ferrari, late dramas in the Bahrain Grand Prix then. So that now leaves the Alpine, I'm pretty sure that's Fernando Alonso. He's behind Leclerc now. And still for the lead of the race, Verstappen still chasing Carlos Sainz down. Lap 24, 25 for the leaders. So, I need a safety car now. I'll need to unlap myself as well, so not much hope. Maybe another late DNF pushes into 19. That would be nice. As Carlos Sainz now sets the fastest lap of the race, that's what he needs to do. So we're crossing the line for lap 25, it's basically lap 26 for the leaders, they have lap me and we're about to get lapped by Hamilton and Leclerc behind us. And then there's a big gap to the Alpine, I don't want to be getting lapped by an Alpine though. That would be soft in the wounds of us then. 20th position. Definitely going into Saudi Arabia. Big upgrades are needed. And underbody damage as well. Didn't feel where that came from. Didn't think I was going over the curbs too violently. And I don't... Well, he's saying we don't have front wing damage. I'm not too sure about that. We're off the lap one. Collision with Vettel there. Um, the wing hasn't been feeling too good as here is. Lewis Hamilton on the scene already then and he'd probably yell lap us on the straight there on the main straight if we can maybe stay within DRS it's probably not going to happen as the blue flags are now up for us we're going to let him pass the next corner then so we're going to pull over to the right hand side let pass Lewis Hamilton and We'll let Leclerc pass as well. Leclerc's trying to get us some slipstream. What's he doing? We, he's gone right up to the back of us and he just hasn't overtaken. And now he's gone deep. We're now alongside him. He's going very slow here. He wanted to catch the Mercedes. Look at us here with some DRS. We're not racing anyone else. We're racing the Ferrari though in this yellow flags. Because Alex Albon has gone off the track. More late drama then. And that now pushes our teammate, Marcus Armstrong, up. And he's going for the inside line on Sebastian Vettel. Armstrong, they're going to be side by side. There's some contact, maybe. He's got on the curb. Now Stroll is going to maybe get Armstrong. He's very vulnerable going into this part of the track. Is Stroll going to send one? No, he's not. But Armstrong, he's got one position. He nearly got two. But now he's going to be left vulnerable for Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin to send one down the inside. Simple move. But is it going to pay off? Because Armstrong's on the outside. He's going to keep the move for now. Lap 26 or 27, depending what lap we are on compared to the leaders. But 
Armstrong is in a really good job. Pretty sure he's 16th at the moment. Really good job from Marcus Armstrong in this car. He's outperforming me massively here. So more late drama with Alex Albon going off the track. That pushes Williams down to 18th and 19th. We are still 20th and still very far behind. So then we're going to cross the line for our final lap of the race. We won't get to do the 29th because we have been lapped. And we have been caught by the Alpine, that is a bonus. But this race has just felt long and tiring for us. The pace was there in practice, we were there or thereabouts with the other cars. Qualifying was a big, big failure in last place. And today we are last again, 20th position out of 22. Two DNFs from Russell and Magnussen, and a few wide moments, including Leclerc spinning, Albon going off in the last few laps. But it's going to be then the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz that's going to win in Bahrain. He's done well since his teammate spun. He's been leading. He's going to round the final corner. He's kept off the pressure from Verstappen. He's managed the pressure and he's going to take his first win in Formula 1. Carlos Sainz wins the first race and he gets fastest lap. No, he doesn't. Verstappen's fastest lap. Perez is fastest lap. They're all stealing it off each other. Sainz wins in Bahrain, though. Ferrari have struck early, but Red Bull are definitely there. Hamilton will claim fourth. From fifth, Leclerc after a late spin. After Russell DNF, he's been there, couldn't quite catch the Mercedes. And for us, it is a disaster of a race. We'll have to fight back in Jeddah, and it's P20 for us. And that's the end of the race. See you in Park And here's our winner pulling their Ferrari into Park Ferme after a fantastic race. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. So then, it's Ferrari that win in Bahrain. Carlos Sainz takes his first ever Formula 1 Grand Prix win. And, and now, let's take a well, look at the for us, stand. it is not the race Carlos we would have wanted the then. In the championship standings. Well, so, Sainz from Verstappen. And the fastest lap does go at Perez, who gets a podium. It's a double Red Bull podium after Ferrari's spin. Hamilton fourth. Damage limitation, really, for the Mercedes. Leclerc's fifth. Alonso takes good points in sixth. Bottas is seventh. Eighth for Ocon. Ninth for Gasly. And points for McLaren. Was not expecting that. Maybe the DNFs helped him as well. Sonoda, Schumacher. Ricardo, Joe Guanyu, Sebastian Vettel, and then we get to our teammate, Marcus Armstrong. What a job to get 16 in the K86 racing team car. Um, for me, I found it impossible. I need to get better on this controller then. In the coming races, it's Armstrong for 16th, Stroll 17th, 
Albon's late drama puts him 18th. 19th for Latifi and we take P20 ahead of Russell and Magnussen who both didn't finish the race then. In the standings it's all the same as the race order for the first race and in the constructors one point separates Ferrari from Red Bull. Very interesting battle at the front then with Ferrari ahead of Red Bull. Mercedes gets 12 points so does Alpine there equal 6 points for Alfa Romeo as Bottas did a great job. Alfa Tari claimed 2 and 1 point for McLaren. Haas, Aston Martin, Us and Williams all on 0 points. We will be chasing down the first points in the next few races. We're going to bring some upgrades. Here's the team acclaim level then. We're going to get a bit. We're still level 1 for the team acclaim though. We've got 2.5 now. And then for the cash, damage deductions for us with underbody damage. But we do get a total of 79,000. And a total of 1.6 million over the weekend race then. So that has been it for the first race. I really hope you did enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.